everyone, it's me, Zoe Hill. So today I'm going to talk to you about some self-care routines um, for mental health. So the first one is routine. Now, it might not sound a lot, but it is extremely important to have routine in your life. It's what keeps you grounded. <clears throat> um, for someone that doesn't have routine, and this could be something so simple as having breakfast at the same time every day or going for a walk, um, easy goals, um, just something that can make you proud of yourself, that you've done it, uh, getting up every day. Um, like I say, having breakfast, um, washing your face, um, making your bed, getting dressed, something easy and that can make you proud of yourself and feel good that you've done it. Um, the importance of that is phenomenal. Um, but it's also something that um, is going to keep you grounded and keep you motivated. The next one is having a hobby. Now, I'm not saying everybody is talented. Um, I'm personally not very artistic or creative, but if you can find a hobby, something that you are particularly good at, fantastic. If you are good at painting, fantastic. Make sure you do something like that daily or weekly. If you are good at makeup, do that. I, I'm quite good at makeup. So that is something that I try and do weekly just for myself, lock myself in my bedroom and try and do my eyes like smokily. I like to try and do that. <laughs> uh, nails. Some people are fantastic at doing nails. Nail art. I can't, but I love to see what other people can do with nails. Um, knitting, crocheting. Now, this is another thing is some people feel like um, when you get an illness like fibromyalgia or chronic another chronic illness, that their life suddenly has no meaning. But actually, if you're good at knitting or crocheting or painting or something like that, you can develop that. Um, babies that are born prematurely need hats. So if you can crochet or knit a hat, you can donate those. Now that does give your life meaning because you're doing something that not many other people can do. And that's phenomenal. Um, if you're good at painting, you could sell that artwork. Now you probably don't think that your artwork would go for much or you probably don't think you can do it. You can do it because other people can't do that. You can sell your artwork. It may not sell for much. It might sell for hundreds. You don't ever know until you do it. Um, sell it and then you could donate that money. You could put that money into your own house or your children or whatever you want to do. But that's something that you've done now and that gives your life meaning. Um, you could, if, you, if you're not artistic at all, you could donate your time. Now, we all have time somewhere along the line, even if it's just in the evenings or weekends. You could donate your time to food banks. You could donate your time to, to teaching children to learn to read and write. Um, I've, do, I've personally done that. I've um, donated my time to help children read. And I know that that is extremely rewarding. Um, so yes, you, you can do that. All you need to do is you go to your local primary school and tell them that you would like to donate your time to help children read. They will then um, do a police check for you. Uh, you. It doesn't cost you anything. They just do a quick police check and um, they then you help uh, children learn to read, which is fantastic. Um, and it's extremely rewarding for yourself. Um, you don't need to be an Einstein. I'm certainly not. And um, then away you go. Another thing for self-help, um, for mental health, is sleep. Now, if you do have fibromyalgia or um, another chronic illness, you will know that sleep is a problem. It could be either or. You could have insomnia or you could have CFS. Either of those two is going to cause you a problem with your sleep pattern. Um, if you have insomnia... Um, a good thing to do is uh, a little trick that I do is when you go to bed, um, if when when you close your eyes, everybody will see um, blood cells 
and uh, floaters in your eyes. If you focus on those, keep your eyes closed for as long as you can. And if you focus on those, you will see patterns. Try and make a pattern out. It sounds, sounds silly, I know. But if you're keeping your eyes closed and you are focusing on patterns, you will fall asleep. Do not let your mind wander into things that happened 10 days ago or stress about things because that is what will keep you awake more. Just concentrate, close your eyes, concentrate on those floaters, try and pick out patterns and you will fall asleep. I know because I do it, I do suffer with insomnia, but then I also suffer with CFS. So I have both of the scales. Um, CFS will cause you to want to sleep all the time. Don't. The worst thing you can do is sleep for hours at a time during the day and then wonder why you don't sleep at night. <sighs> Try, I know that it's extremely hard because I do it myself. You want to sleep during the day and then want to sleep during the night. You can't do it all. For me, my best thing was to cut out the naps during the day. I felt dreadful. But when I went to sleep at night, it was easier then to fall asleep. Again, I concentrated, I kept my eyes closed, concentrated on what I, on the um, white lines and, and the things that I saw with my eyes closed. Tried not to um, think about things that stressed me out 10 days ago. And eventually I got into a better sleeping pattern and was able to fall asleep at night and less naps during the day. It doesn't work for everybody, but... It, you know, it, it did work for me. So I'm trying to pass on that knowledge to you to hopefully help you as well. Um, for mental health, it does help to talk. Not everybody has someone to talk to. So I will put some links on here um, when I post this for, for you guys to be able to talk to people. If you have a friend or a relative that you can talk to, sometimes just call them up. Sometimes they will know that you need to talk to. And if you can laugh about it, fantastic. Laughter is the best medicine. I always say that. Um, if, you, if you do have someone to talk to, reach out to them. That is the best thing you can do if you are struggling. Um, it's the hardest thing for anybody to do, reach out. Some people can do it, some people can't. I do personally struggle to reach out to people and ask them for help. It's it's just something that I can't do. I can go to a counsellor and talk to them. So if you can talk to a counsellor, please go to that person and talk to them. If you can talk to your parent or a friend, please go do that because those those people want to help you. You're not alone. Everybody goes through mental health issues. Everybody does. And everybody wants to help you. You're not alone. People, There are people there to help you. And I will put some resources up for you to be able to talk to them. Another thing is make sure that you take time for yourself. Whether that be going out for a walk and just having five minutes on your own, just for your own space, just to think about things, do that. If you want to just lay on the sofa and just have 10 minutes of Netflix and you, Netflix and chill, do that. Your body needs to rest. Chronic illness, illnesses, you need to do that. Fibromyalgia, you need to rest. That's what your body needs to do. You should never feel guilty for doing that. Now, I know we all do because I do too. Everybody feels guilty for resting, especially if you've got a loved one cooking, cleaning, and you are sat on the sofa resting. It's natural to feel guilty for doing that, but you have to do it because if you don't do it, you will suffer, you will struggle. I know that that's easy for me to say, I know it, but unfortunately, when you have fibromyalgia or a mental illness or a chronic illness, you are ill. That is the crux of it. You are ill and you need to rest. So that, that is what you have to do. So if you are struggling with a mental health um, issue, 
you need to rest. You, you need to take time out for yourself and care for yourself. So if you need to go for a walk, if you need to have a bath and just listen to some music and think about what you want to do, what, what's happening, do it. Please just do it. It's also very uh, therapeutic to cry. Now, some people can, can just cry and some people feel happy to do that. Some people cannot cry. But if you need to do it, just please do it. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is right. There's no right or wrong way to look after yourself. You just have to find the right way to help yourself. Um, now, these are just a few ways to, to look after and help yourself. Some may work for you, some may not. But just try them because even if you try them, you may find something that works better for you. And that's okay. Just celebrate the, the small things that you do that work. Um, and just be proud of yourself. Be proud that you're watching this video and you're trying to help yourself. Remember that you're all amazing and you're all, you're just fantastic people. You're here, you're strong, you're amazing people. Okay? So I'm going to go now, but I want you to know that we're, we're always here for you. We're always here to chat. Just post on here and I'll help you any way that I can. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.